திருச்சிற்றம்பலம் ஆடும் வருவேல் அணி சேவல் என பாடும் பணியே பணியாயி அருள்வாய் தேடும் கயமா முகனை செருவில் சாடும் தனி யானை சகோதரனி திருச்சிற்றம் பூழியர்கோன் பூழித்த புகலியர்கோன் கழ போற்றி ஆழிமிசை கல்மிதப்பில் அணைந்த பிரான் அடி போற்றி வாழி திரு நாவலூர் வன்தொண்டர் பதம் போற்றி ஊழிமலி திருவாத ஊர திருத்தாள் போற்றி திருச்சிற்றம்பல் என் நாடுடைய சிவனே போற்றி என் ஆட்டவர்க்கும் இருபா போற்றி ஏகம்பத்துறை எந்தாய் போற்றி பாகம் மண்ணூர் ஆனாய் போற்றி பராய்த்துறை மேவிய பரணே போற்றி சிராப்பள்ளி மேவிய சிவனே போற்றி அண்ணாமலை அம்மன்னா போற்றி கண்ணார முத கடலே போற்றி காவாய் கனக திரளே போற்றி கைலை மலையானே போற்றி போற்றி வெற்றிவேல் முருகனுக்கு அரோகரா திருச்சிற்றம் அன்று சராசரங்களுக்கெல்லாம் அதிபதியாக விளங்கக்கூடிய முருகப்பெருமானுடைய ஒப்பற்ற பெருங்கருணையினாலே ஞானத்திரள் சார்பாக நம்முடைய அன்பிற்குரிய கத்தார் தம்பதியினர் சரவணன் தம்பதியினருடைய நல்ல ஆதரவினாலே நாம் தொடர்ந்து ஆங்கிலத்திலே தொடராக த ஹோலி டைட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் சைவம் என்கிற தலைப்பிலே திருக்கோயில்களில் எழுந்தருள் இருக்கக்கூடிய சிவமூர்த்தங்களை பற்றி நாம் சிந்தித்து கொண்டு வருகிறோம் இந்த தி லாஸ்ட் செஷன் வி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் அபவுட் தி சோமா ஸ்கந்தர் அண்ட் வி ஆல்சோ கேவ் த டீடைல்ஸ் ஆஃப் த சிங்கிள் என்டிட்டி ஈவன் தோ இட் இஸ் அ சிங்கிள் என்டிட்டி தேர் ஆர் த்ரீ ஃபார்ம்ஸ் சிவம் லார்ட் முருகா அண்ட் காடஸ் சக்தி and we also uh, discussed about the concept of such a form sat sit anandam sat sit anandam sat means eternal sit means jnanam anandam the bliss so these three form the the concept of soma skanda so as a matter of fact the soul should understand that it is eternal but the soul cannot be destroyed doesn't come to an end it exists forever so the soul is also called as sat padi pasu pasam ena pagar mundil padiyine pol pasu pasam anadi திருமுலர் டிஸ்கிரைப்ஸ் த த்ரீ என்டிட்டிஸ் பதி பசு பாசம் தி டாப் மோஸ்ட் இஸ் தி பதி அண்ட் த நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் பசு அண்ட் த தேர்ட் ஒன் இஸ் பாசம் விச் மீன்ஸ் த பாண்டேஜ் அஸ் அ மேட்டர் ஆஃப் ஃபேக்ட் நத்தி கேன் பி டெஸ்ட்ராய்டு அவுட் ஆஃப் தீஸ் த்ரீ தீஸ் த்ரீ எக்ஸிஸ்ட் ஃபார் எவர் எட்டர்னல் சத்து மீன்ஸ் பதி ஆல்சோ சத்து பசு ஆல்சோ சத்து பாசம் ஆல்சோ சத்து ஸோ த அல்மைட்டி எவர் எக்ஸிஸ் நெவர் சீசஸ் த சோல் எவர் எக்ஸிஸ் நெவர் சீசஸ் பட் வாட் இஸ் த டிஃபரன்ஸ் பிட்வீன் தி the almighty and the soul if the if we claim that both of them are sat that is uh, both of them are undestructible both of them exist forever both of them don't have any termination then what is that uh, uh, which uh, gives the difference between these two definitely we know that 
the almighty is far most superior not only superior it is not affected by the malams bondages or ignorances so it comes to our help, it comes to our rescue it comes to our help. out of its kindness it comes forward to help the souls which are suffering due to the bondage which are suffering due to the uh, catchment of this uh, malams even though we are saying malams to start with the soul its wisdom uh, was covered in such a manner not to function by the ignorance the only malam known as anavam it encompasses it covers it sees to it that the wisdom doesn't function if the wisdom functions it's a desire should arise it's a plan should work its uh, execution capacity should function so how to identify that the wisdom works means naturally the, the desire should come up each day and that should be some wisdom planning to complete the or to achieve the desire then uh, automatically comes the third part the execution so your wisdom means i it should have these three functionaries desire planning execution ichche gnanam kriye but once upon a time the souls were not able to function because of their wisdom being influenced entirely by the uh, anavam anavam means darkness we may compare it to the ignorance somebody is asking something we do not know somebody asks uh, some other thing we do not know then people will say that why you are so ignorant you are not aware of anything your wisdom is very limited people will ask so wisdom if you just remove little by little the ignorance it will get exposed to the knowledge like uh, you can compare this to the sight of an eye eye with the cataract defect it may not be able to uh, visualize it may not be able to see anything but once the cataract is the screen is removed a little by little it may get a little by little the vision it is because the thinning down of the cataract likewise the thinning down the ignorance by little by little the soul will be able to uh, function as a matter of it what do you mean by the soul functioning is wisdom working is called soul is functioning if the wisdom doesn't function you cannot call the soul functioning even if the soul is within a body if the wisdom doesn't work you cannot claim that the soul is functioning soul is not at all functioning see by looking at the respiration by looking at the pulses by uh, by feeling the heart beats you can say that the body is okay but you cannot claim that the soul is functioning soul functions only if its wisdom is functionable that is why in dream soul is not functionable it doesn't know where it is it doesn't know what happens in and around of its uh, being so it doesn't understand what does it mean it means 
the wisdom is fully covered by the ignorance during that time. So, the, the soul uh, functions means is wisdom functions. So, just if you compare uh, the soul with its uh, wisdom non-functioning, but uh, due to the grace of God, the soul started functioning a little by the donation of the tools by the Lord to the soul. The soul is provided with uh, tools and other, um, uh, they are called as Tattu Angal. We can group them into Tattu Angal, in tools. We can group them as tools. Some of them are provided inner, some of them are sukshamam, some of them are tulam, some of them are visible, some of them are invisible. Likewise, the tools are given and the soul is able to function a little using its wisdom. Please understand, if the soul functions means it functions with the, its own wisdom with its own wisdom. Since, since it is inherently possessing the wisdom, it is able to function. We are seeing so many inner things in this world, they do not function because they do not have inherent uh, wisdom. We all, we all have in, uh, wisdom, but uh, inherent wisdom we are possessing, but uh, due to some reasons it is not functional. That is why calm, that is why uh, the Almighty comes to our rescue. Okay, now we are discussing uh, the Almighty as Sat, the soul is also Sat, but uh, the Almighty is also uh, is possessing wisdom, the soul is also possessing wisdom, the only thing the only main difference is the soul's wisdom is with defects, whereas the Almighty's wisdom uh, is flawless, padijnana. Not only flawless, it is uncomparable. It spreads, it spreads over the entire universe. He knows anything, anywhere, anytime. So, uh, his uh, capabilities or uh, uh, his uh, potentials cannot be measured with our human wisdom. It is very limited. So, the soul's function is limited or the main constraint is the capacity of the wisdom. If the wisdom is, is large enough or it is free from flaws, it is free from ignorance, then naturally the wisdom can be claimed to be of more quality. Definitely a soul can claim itself as superior as, or better the soul can claim or the souls can claim they are better than others, they are superior than others, they are uh, far more better than others. If they want to claim means their wisdom should be more exposed and more functional. So, as far as we are concerned, Sat, Sith, Sat, Sith, the, when we compare these two, as far as Sat is compared, the souls are uh, equally, equally uh, existing, eternal compared to the God, the Almighty. But as far as wisdom is concerned, the, there are constraints in the functionalities of the wisdom 
whereas the there are no constraints there are no limitations for the wisdom of the almighty that is why the unmeasurable unquantifiable uh, unexplicable the gnanam of lord shiva it is helps everybody's wisdom as a matter of fact he helps the soul to come out of the ignorance and make its wisdom functional fully without any reservation without any flaw you can climb like that so as far as these two aspects are concerned to certain extent to certain extent the lord shiva is comparable to soul how dare i am to climb like this comparable with the lord shiva the soul see it is uh, it is subject to certain condition i am uh, quoting this statement i am saying that the soul is comparable comparable to the almighty in the aspect that both of them are eternal both of them are non destructible both of them are ever existing in that aspect i am saying that both of them are comparable the point number 2 regarding the wisdom why i should go to the uh, the third part is, or the the com comparison level the next comparison level because the possum is also eternal um it cannot be destroyed it ever exists so in that aspect these three uh, quantities or entities these three are comparable or same in the aspect of ever living padi pasu pasam ena pagar mundil padiyine pol comparing the padi with pasu and pasam when tirumular does that comparison i have the right to quote that padiyine pol he compares the pasu and pasam with the lord with one aspect what is that aspect sat so in that aspect they are compare let us go to the next level that is wisdom level then you can compare only these two that is pati and pasu the pasam has to be deleted and eliminated why because the pasam doesn't have wisdom at all it doesn't have wisdom at all so there, there, there is no point in taking it for comparison so we can eliminate that in the next level the comparable things are only uh, padi and pasu padi sat pasu also sat sat means ever existing never ceases to exist you understand okay so the next level i am saying that the Uh, pa padi is comparable to pasu they can be compared in the aspect that both of them are possessing wisdom the only thing is the only thing is padi's uh, wisdom is flawless whereas pasu's wisdom is covered and uh, uh, it has been uh, adulterated with uh, anavam or ignorance it has been adulterated means it has been 100% adulterated so that adulteration is to be rectified purified whatever you call and god comes to rescue and he helps he gives the soul with so many tools and it expects the soul to come forward and to uh, function to to do some deeds in the positive direction to nall away or to remove even little by little the ignorance from its wisdom so that 
that wisdom will be uh, become will become flawless will become flawless so that's the process going on god is helping god gives uh, has given all the tools to the soul the soul is existing in five bodies even though we are able to visualize only the thula body the visible body there are other four bodies as we have discussed already there are other four bodies sukshma without them this thula body will not be able to operate in this world so that functionary details we have di discussed in uh, in the last uh, chapters in the last sessions or in the last serial so i am not going to explain all those things in once again now my point of concentration is you must please you must uh, closely follow me i want to emphasize one point here, that we are comparing the two out of the three the third one is eliminated we are comparing only padi and pasu the almighty and the soul and in the aspect of wisdom they can be compared they are comparable and the flawless uh, wisdom of lord helps helps the soul to remove to scrap the ignorance in its the ignorance in its wisdom not at only at one, one stroke but uh, in various stages for some souls the process may be very slow for some souls it may be faster some for some souls it will be very very fast likewise there there will be a difference uh, in the speed of the process naturally anyway what will happen at the end suppose the in the process is going on the soul is trying to and uh, scrap the ignorance from its wisdom with the help of the almighty okay it, it the process is going on at one stage what will happen at one stage the entire wisdom would have been removed from the oh, sorry the entire ignorance in the wisdom will be removed is it not it will happen one day or other isn't it so many births we have taken the purpose of the birth is only this nothing else as far as saivam is concerned the purpose of the birth the souls are taking innumerable births they are one after the other they are going on taking what is the purpose of it the purpose of the birth is to scrap the ignorance from the wisdom that's all <coughs> மாயாமலம்னசிட்டி ஃபார் திஸ் மாயாமலம் ஆர் கன்மமலம் why at all i should have a body or tools if my wisdom is going to be pure if it is going to be flawless why should i need all these things not necessary once i am able to uh, breathe without any difficulty my respiration has been restored properly i am able to uh breath 100% without any difficulty that where is the point of holding a ventilator why should that all be connected it need not be connected because i am having my own system of breathing is it not likewise if my wisdom is pure then no point in having these uh, bodies or in this life in this prapancham by your life in this prapanjam is at all necessary it's not at all necessary now it won't be given 
it will not be given, we will not be coming back. We will not even know what, uh, whether the such world exists or not. You understand? Okay, my wisdom has become pure. My question is, if my wisdom has become flawless and 100% pure, will I become almighty? Will I become Brahman? Because Brahman, the Almighty is Sat, I am also Sat. The Almighty flawless wisdom, I am also now having flawless wisdom. Once I get it, once I get my wisdom flawless, pure wisdom, then why at all I should care the Almighty? Why at all I should care? I am equal to Him. Such a postulates are only studied in Aneha Yeswara Vadam, Siva Samavada Saivam. There are, there is a group of people who climb like this. You understand? The main point everybody is forgetting in this discussion, in this aspect is the soul never, never, never can become the Almighty. It can never become the Almighty. It may be equal in the aspect of Sat. It may be equal in the aspect of Sat. It may be equal in the aspect of Sit. Okay. Satli Samano, Sitli Samano. Okay. Then what prevents from saying that the soul is equal to Almighty because the the main, the, the primary reason is the God Almighty possesses the bliss, the great bliss, Anandam. Soul does not have any bliss at all. Anmavikku Anandam kedayad. In, in Dharmi Adinam, one of the Tambirans, made the postulate, he said that the Anma has its own pleasure. Once it is out of ignorance, it will be able to enjoy that pleasure. He narrated such a postulate and the Guru Maha Sannidhanam Guru Jnana Sambandar. He composed a full book on Mutti Nichayam only for the uh, elimination or deletion of or proving that this theory is false, he has written that Muthi Nichayam. He wrote it only because of this postulate. So, the Padi is always above, superior, because it possesses the, it possesses the Anandam, the bliss, and it is ready to donate, it is ready to part with. So, it is at the delivery end, I am always at the receiving end. Soul is always receiving and the Almighty is always delivering. Almighty never requires, never receives anything from any soul. You understand? So that is the biggest difference. This concept is explained in Soma Skanda. In Soma Skanda, Sat, even though there are three forms, Sat form he manifests in Sivam, Sit form he manifests in Sakti, Anandam he manifests in the Murugan, Sat, Sit, Anandam, Sachit Anandam. So, Saivam claims that the soul can never become, even though all ignorance would have been removed with the help of Almighty, not by in its own, by its, own, uh, by, by its uh, capacity or by its efforts, only because of Lord, 
it was it was suffering in the ignorance due to ignorance it was suffering in the darkness god only came forward and helped it once the soul is out of the darkness it may think that i am comparable to god and i am brahma that was the biggest problem with yagam brahmam people they think they they claim they are equal to brahmam and they are brahmam once the maya and karma are removed they claim they are equal to brahmam how can it be when maya and karma are removed what about the anavam that makes the biggest difference so you you just see uh, the sat and sit it's not complete sat and sit doesn't make completion that should be if there is a length and breadth there should be a depth to denote a volume then only it is real only if you have three dimensions it is real otherwise it's only a, a, a depicting an area which is only a shadow it can it cannot be claimed to be real if it is a real thing it should have a length it should have a breadth and it should have also have a depth yaar arivar engal annalin perumai yaar arivar inda agalamum neelamum பேரறியாத பெருஞ்சுடர் ஒன்றதின் பேரறியாமை விளம்புகின்றேனே தட்ஸ் ஹவு திருமுலர் கிளைம்ஸ் ஸோ த டெப்த் த டெப்த் தீஸ் த்ரீ ஃபார்ம் த கம்ப்ளீட்னஸ் ஆஃப் த ஆர்டிகல் ஆர் ஆப்ஜெக்ட் ஆர் எனி திங் லெங்க் இன் டு பிரத் இன் டு ஹைட் இட் கிவ்ஸ் த வால்யூம் சத்து சித்து ஆனந்தம் இட் கிவ்ஸ் த கம்ப்ளீஷன் ஸோ தி சச்சிதானந்தம் இட் கிவ்ஸ் ஈவன் தோ தேர் ஆர் த்ரீ ஃபார்ம்ஸ் சத் சிவா உமை முருகன் ஈவன் தோ தேர் ஆர் த்ரீ ஃபார்ம்ஸ் இட் இஸ் ஓன்லி எ சிங்கிள் ஃபார்ம் சிங்கிள் என்டிட்டி எ சிங்கிள் நேம்ஸ் சோமாஸ் கந்தர் a single entity which means the soul enjoying the bliss of lord shiva with the help of his grace that's so that's what happens to all souls so saiva siddhantam explains the soul's suffering is not due to maya and kanmam is only due to anavam that is the prime factor for the sufferings unless otherwise you understand unless otherwise you appreciate unless otherwise you come to the decision that all the sufferings are due to the ignorance in my wisdom the lack of clarity in my wisdom causes all sufferings you you just uh, analyze or audit your uh, some of the sufferings in the prabhajam in, in throughout your life you must have come across so many happenings you just analyze uh, one, uh, one by one what is the real reason for that suffering most of them you will understand that uh, the decision taken by you would have led you to the suffering the moment the moment you have taken the decision your mind may not would not have been clear to give you a clarified or clear uh, mind so you would have taken some decision which might have caused all these sufferings you yourself will uh, uh, realize yenna apdi panne nu theriyala என் புத்தி ஏன் அப்படி போச்சுன்னு தெரியல ஒய் வி ஆர் சேயிங் லைக் தட் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த நான் கிளாரிட்டி பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த இக்னரன்ஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் இட் பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் த இக்னரன்ஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் இட் 
you are taking decisions for your suffering. So, your suffering should come to an end means the wisdom should be very pure and clear. The wisdom part of it, the ignorance part of it is due to anavamalam. That anavamalam is to be removed. The process is going on. So, please concentrate. Please concentrate in your bhakti, in your anmiham or in your routine puja. You must understand the process should uh, make my mind clear. I should have a clear wisdom. That is why whenever we take some important decision, we go to Lord and we beg him before him. We beg him to give a clear mind to take a right decision. Is it not? Why are we going and asking him? Because our mind may not be perfect in taking a decision due to ignorance part of it, we may wrongly decide. and may cause the after effects because of a wrong decision. So, the Saga Uma Skandar, Soma Skandar, by looking at the entity, by looking at the form, by looking at the Murti, by looking at the deity, we must understand that Lord Shiva is Sat, Lord Shiva is pure Sith, Lord Shiva is pure Ananda. So, uh, He has graced me, He has chosen me, He has some or other uh, blessed me to get His bliss through the process and uh, he is expecting me to cooperate with him and to go along the travel holding his hand by our side without losing him at any moment. See throughout our life uh, when we walk, we are walking by our own self, ourselves, by, uh, by ourselves we are walking. Sometimes, uh, <coughs> The passage or the path may look darker and difficult, and you may uh, you may bewilder, you may wonder how to proceed, you may even be afraid of proceeding, how to move about. The future may be dark. You may not know what to do, how to do, where to go, whom to trust. All these difficulties may come. Uh, at those periods, at those uh, moments, and during those periods, at those moments, who is there to support you? Who is there to lead you properly? Who is there to light your way? Who is there to enlighten you? The rightness. So, these are all the policies, principles. Uh, behind our this form. So, when we are praying, when we are making the uh, prayer to the deities, uh, uh, Saiva Siddhantam expects that it should be concerned with our wisdom. Arivardha Pusai. See, it should not be superstitious. It should not be superstitious. Blindly doing something without knowing why we are doing, why it should be done, without knowing all those details, blindly doing one after the other with the reflex action, why should we do? We must have some consciousness, we must be aware why we are doing this, why we are praying this, what is the, what is the principle behind doing like this. All these things should be taken into account when we are offering our prayer to the deities. This is the expectation of our mentors. So, one of the very, very, very important form of deities is the Soma Skandar. Almost all, everywhere in all uh, Shiva temples, 
சோமாஸ்கந்தர் மூர்த்தம் த டெய்டி இஸ் வெரி வெரி ப்ராமினன்ட் பாப்புலர் அண்ட் நெவர் மிஸ்ஸிங் டெய்டி இன் சிவா டெம்பிள் ஃபார் ஒர்ஷிப் இஃப் யூ கோ டு திருவாரூர் த சோமாஸ்கந்தர் மூர்த்தம் இஸ் நோன் எஸ் தியாகராஜா in some places uh, tyagaraja will be there but tyagaraja uh, i have been told that in tyagaraja also there are there is a lord muruga inside but we cannot see him we are not able to see him there but st- some people are climbing some people are climbing that there is a lord muruga inside and uh, uh some also claim to have seen it uh, um not from the public but from the family who have the right the families who have the right to touch tyagaraja and uh, do puja for him so it is only somaskanda uh form is called tyagaraja so almost all tem- why i am saying this is because the in tiruvarur there is no somaskandar you should not say like that that's why i am telling you wherever you go somaskandar you may see in temples where you don't see somaskandar if you see tyagaraja it depicts the same idea of somaskandar so somaskandar saka uma skandar as i explained you already uh, the concept behind the worshiping the somaskandar is we can get the pleasure or the bliss the true bliss the true bliss if you understand the one concept can you enjoy the f- uh, food can you enjoy the food with the pain in the stomach if your stomach is not functioning properly and if you are feeling pain in your stomach what is the point of uh, uh, being provider or fed with a feast you cannot enjoy at all you cannot enjoy it at all so if you go and ask the lord uh, almighty give me pleasure give me f- f- fund give me money give me this give me that asking all these things without asking him without asking him i want to enjoy all these things is it possible you must ask him you are asking money but you must also ask him by the money you are going to give me can i enjoy the money you are asking him something you must ask him if that is being given to me can i enjoy that yogam is different from bhogam we are all asking only for bhogam but we never ask for yogam at all we go and pray for bhogams give me that give me this give me that asking all the things thinking that we will be able to enjoy them once we are provided with not necessarily not necessarily do you think that you can enjoy whatever you wanted to no bhogam means the property yogam means the fate of enjoying the property so they are quite different they are they are different if you ask for bhogam if you are not asking for yogam then naturally the bhogam will be given but it will be enjoyed by somebody else in the name of you that's all so the thing eh, you must ask him is not bhogam or not yogam you must uh, ask him you must uh, demand you must uh, put your demand you must uh, 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 worship him with the demand that i don't want yogam i don't want bhogam i only want you because that is the bliss 
that is the pleasure yogam and bhogam uh, bound together yogam and bodha merged together that is called anandam bliss in this world yogam and bhogam never go together you have to get separately them there will be bhogam but yogam will come in the form of vinay your deeds or re uh, the reaction or the uh, the feedback of your deeds they are one they are different in the world uh, aspect in the world aspect they, they are different they don't come together they don't come together that is why sundramurthy says punnum meipurulum tharuvaani bhogamum thiruvum punarpaani they are different if you want to enjoy anything in this world these two you must be possessing if you possess only one thing you cannot enjoy you may have yogam you may not have bhogam how can you enjoy you may have bhogam you may not have yogam how can you enjoy you must have both of them i must have money and i must have the fate of enjoying it then only i will be able to enjoy otherwise i will not spend it i will keep it throughout my life somebody to come and enjoy that scolding me that was that, that's what happens that we are seeing with our naked eyes isn't it so many people are earning so many things leaving them in this world going away huh? to that legal heirs who are enjoying them is it not so this is the fate of the world's uh, pleasure whereas the bliss of lord the almighty it is a combo package both yoga both bhogam both yoga and bhogam they put together in god's bliss so that is why to show that that place to show that without inseparable to show that show that lord possesses the uh, anandam and also lord possesses the shakti and uh, lord is the giver so giver yogam bhogam all of them put together somaskandha so if you want to enjoy real anandam then this is the deity which offers you the total bliss so many things are not uh, understood in this world the theory behind this uh, life of the world is not at all understood people are crazy about the money people are crazy about the wealth people are crazy about so many things in this world it is all because of the ignorance in their wisdom one single moment a patinatar just to throw out all his things because the that that moment his wisdom got cleared of everything there was only a scent of uh, anava malam that was removed by a single passage or single sentence by the lord bardavana so what we i am trying to say is uh, the, the the thing is we must concentrate we must concentrate that the almighty's pleasure is the only thing that we can enjoy without any reservation or limitations or with any other constraints so the only pleasure the only pleasure that comes without any risk is god's bliss all pleasures in this world are coming at some risk we are taking some risk i am demanding some pleasure you are taking some risk see nowadays uh, the financial uh, people uh, whenever they do some investments they are looking at the risk factor is it not what is the risk of 
uh, funding in mutual fund or in deposits. See, likewise, the the pressure in Almaty. What people think? How God and Almaty can give me pressure? Only the the good food will give, good clothes will give, or uh, other things, worldly things will give pressure. But how God can give the pressure? People are arguing like that, and they are also. Uh, thinking that almighty cannot give any pressure by himself he will only grace to get this wealth he will only help to get the all these things and get the pressure that's what they think almighty will help us lord will help us god will help us to get all these bogums and also to get all bogums to be enjoyed the yogam that that is the thing god will Give us no, no that, that is not correct. This yogam, bogam, these things are the only things, and we uh, we also come to the conclusion, or we think that it is a duty of Almighty to offer all these things to the souls. Our guru ka mein yar guru ka pora. That's how the people ask. But he expects the souls to ask for a better thing. Is it not? If the father wants his son to ask for something, means he will expect that his his taste should be elevated. His taste should be somewhat better. Is it not? Then only he come will come to the conclusion that my son has reached some maturity level. Why the uh, why some people are choosing uh, the cheap things? Why some people are choosing some quality things? Why some people are uh, boycotting or uh, they are sacrificing? They don't uh, come forward to take these things. Why there is a difference like this? You understand? If you go to a buffet. People will come take food in their plates. If you just watch, some people will take whatever they see. They 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 will take and fill their plates. They they will not be sure that they are going to consume all the things they have taken on the plates. But they will take all the things. They will fill their plates. They will not they will not consume everything. But they will take everything. But you can see some people they will choose some food, and also to a certain extent they will be deciding this may not be uh, suitable for me. I mean, I don't want this. I don't want much of this. I want little. Likewise, they will decide and take. Why the difference between these two? What is the difference between these two people from the? Uh, living example kindly look into the example and decide some people are taking something when other people are uh, taking so much of things some people are going for good food some people are going for gorgeous foods everything in this world kindly understand whatever they do whatever they talk Whatever they they are functional, whatever they think, all of them are to their wisdom level. It is the only thing that counts the wisdom level. What they do, what they think, what they talk, everything wisdom level. You cannot make them to do right things by force. Unless otherwise, their wisdom level is um, is coming to that uh, mark. He cannot be forced to do that. He will pretend that he, he would be he is liking that in front of you. Once you go away, on behind you, he will revert back to his own decision because his wisdom level cannot be changed. So much of things are being advised by parents to their daughter. 
but daughter is choosing some some fellow uh, as his partner as her partner parents may be advising so many things in so many angles but she may not be listening gets her wisdom level is only to that extent how that's all you cannot expect her to accept your uh, advice or your uh, offers or your other things so again and again saiva siddhantam pivots the whole saiva siddhantam pivots on wisdom level in this birth the wisdom level how it has uh, been revised how it has been revived how it has reached a new height or it has gone down the if the, the wisdom level is slowly rising and if it reaches to your mark the behavior of the soul the approach of the soul the talking the the thinking the behavior everything will be according to their wisdom level once it is refined then the talk will be refined their action will be refined their thoughts will be refined so refining means that is why our people insist that you must recite these holy songs because it directly connects our wisdom level it influences our wisdom level only by strong words your wisdom level not by ordinary people but saints their messages their advices they have its own influence so by reciting devaram by reciting tiruvachakam by reciting all those things by doing prayers to somaskandar by doing prayers to their deities by by doing prayers to ammayappar the wisdom level definitely will go up will go up but it is very difficult to make the people to do puja they are reluctant to do it they are reluctant to recite songs devaram and other things they sit not it, it is the that that is why from the childhood the customary the habit should have been cultivated some or other we must force our children some or other we have to force our children to do some prayers offer them some prayers no, nothing wrong but make them do some pujas make them do make them recite some devaram and other songs you can see their behavior uh, is becoming better and it will be ref refined and it will be softer and also at the same time right decision taking capacity will be cultivated for the children that is why our people insist our ancestors insist on doing prayers for the deities and offering prayers by reciting devaram and other tirumurais so once again there's this the uh, details of worshiping of somaskandar the the real details involved the real intricacies involved or it, the real concept Uh, i think i have nearly explained uh, the discussion will be continued in the next week also uh, we will take up uh, the next form of deity very very important tenmuga kadavul dakshinamurthi uh, i think uh, i would be able to start this week itself with dakshinamurthi but uh, since the uh, explanation the concept explanation it took some time so so much kandar uh, extended this week also so we will take up dakshinamurthi in the next week and we will start our discussion details so many possible so many concepts so many truths we have to understand from this concept from this form of dakshinamurthi so that we will be able to get a clear mind and our wisdom will be purified okay now i will recite five letter mantra five times I request all of you to follow me please Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya 
ओम नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय तिरचित्रम्बलम आई हैव टू थैंक वंस अगेन आवर कतार कपल मिसेस एंड मिस्टर सरवणन दे ओनली इनिशिएटेड द सीरियल and uh, i have to thank you that uh, i hope that uh, most of the uh, people who are not well versed with it tamil they would be able to understand and appreciate the concepts and the real facts and the real principles of uh, our the the great great saiva siddhantam we can meet in our next section thank you திருச்சிற்றம்பல் தென் நாடுடைய சிவனே போற்றி என் நாட்டவர்க்கும் இறைவா போற்றி வெற்றிவேல் முருகனுக்கு அரோஹரா திருச்சிற்றம்பலம்